talking to Marcus Pollard, father of Michigan freshman Micah Pollard, also his day job, the director of player development for the Jacksonville Jaguars, oh, yeah, we who happened week, to right? play the Detroit Lions this week. Marcus, just big picture, size up where Jacksonville is as an organization right now. Uh, you bring in a new coach. You, you've got uh, a, a shiny new piece in the number one overall pick, Trayvon Walker. you got to feel good about uh, who you got there. Another number one overall pick in Trevor Lawrence. Um, your program is really moving along over there, is it not? Yes, it is. And hats off to, to, to Mr. Khan and, and uh, Pat Balke, our general manager. Uh, to have those selections, it's kind of hard to miss on those two guys. Both are once-in-a-lifetime talent in Trevor Lawrence and Trayvon, and to have those guys on this team doing the things that they're doing to help us win football games is important uh, because we don't want to be picking one overall nowhere in the near future. So we'll let somebody else, let somebody else have that one overall pick. That means we're winning football games. And I think the guys that we've selected uh, so far are doing a tremendous job. Yeah, talk about Trevor Lawrence. Obviously, last year he struggled a little bit with that regime down there. We don't need to talk about that. But talk about how important it is. You know, hey, we won't have to talk about that. We'll have to talk about that guy. It happened. It's over with. But just talk about how important it is to get a guy like that weapons. The thing that he had uh, when he was in Clemson, he had weapons. The guys that he had at Clemson, and one of those weapons happens to be in that backfield for him now, Travis Etienne. Talk about Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, and uh, Travis Etienne. Yeah, I mean, he's got weapons. You know, that's the one thing that I have to give hats off to again for Trent Bauck and our scouting department, personnel department, because they really went out and really made some really sound free agent decisions for us to give Travis an opportunity to get weapons around guys that can help him look good and make him play well. And that's what we've done. Having Travis in the backfield with him is very comforting. And they spend all that time and clumps them together. And one thing, I'm not looking forward to next year, but to think we, we'll get Calvin Ridley to go with this group oh, of guys yeah. that we already have. Oh, so that's I'm right. I'm really excited about what's going forward. What do you think of the Lions, Marcus? Uh, have you been following their progress and everything? This is a pretty – I would think this is a pretty evenly matched game, if you're asking me, uh, as an NFL fan. Yeah, I agree. I think both of us are on a somewhat similar trajectory. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Dan Campbell, who I've played with in Detroit, uh, Mark Brunel, who I know, playing against Aaron Glenn. So there are a lot of coaches on that staff that I have personal relationships with uh, – Todd, Todd Wash, the defensive line coach. So there are a lot of guys in that staff that I know those guys are going to work hard. They're going to play their tails off and compete. And I think that's what we're going to do here. I'm looking forward to having an exciting game. And I think both teams are in this dogfight to continue their season uh, and, and, and play well. Hey, Marcus, I got to ask you a question. I, I would behoove myself if I didn't ask this question. One of the first people I met when I met you in terms of team members with the Indianapolis Colts, one of my favorite guys was Jeff Saturday. Jeff Saturday is one of my favorite guys. I had a chance to meet him in, uh, in Indy the first time I went there and also had a chance to meet him here Thanksgiving game in 2000 and, uh, 2004, I believe it was. Talk about how you feel about that decision. He's now the head coach for the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, just tell me anything, how you want to feel about it, because there's so many different ways you can go with it, yeah. but he's obviously the head coach there now. No coaching experience. Yeah, I, I think it was, for me it would have been a tough decision for me to make if Miss Ursay would have offered me that job because I know that there's a lot of responsibility other than coaching ball that comes with being a head coach of an NFL team. You're, you're more of a CEO than you're a ball coach. And so for Jeff, having never been in a, in a building uh, for a meeting or for a director's meeting or a scouting meeting, uh, to me I think is a heavy load to carry. But knowing Jeff the way that I do, he's, he's a man for the job. He's very hard work. He's determined. I think he's a great leader of men, and to me that's the one thing that stands out in my mind first and foremost. He's such a good leader of men, not just a good leader. He's a great leader of men, and when you can have that on your resume, and I'm certain guys in that locker room and the coaches on that staff will see that about Jeff. Hey, Marcus, I want to ask you about your, your current job right now, which is the director of player development. Braylon and I always talk about, you know, it's not for, – for guys that get drafted, it's not – when you go, number three overall pick, it's where you go. Uh, are you going to a competent organization that has a good structure, that has a, uh, a good coach, that cares that, about you, that has a good uh, staff to develop you as a player? How important is that, and how overlooked? Do you think that area is when you when you watch an NFL draft and you see this? Uh, all talented player that comes, uh, but they got no quarterback. Are they, you, you know what I'm trying to get at here. Just 
talk about that uh, process as an as a player development leader there in Jacksonville. Yeah, I think to me that that whole picture of having a player coming to an organization, it's that entire ecosystem. It's the strength and conditioning department. It's the the dietitian. It's the trainers. It's the coaches. It's the general manager. It's the owner. It's the organization as an entirety. And to me, we here in Jacksonville, I can speak here. We take this holistic approach where we're all hands on with our players. And we know that's vital because a lot of times coming from these colleges, sometimes they don't know or haven't been taught uh, the professional way or the leadership skill set that uh, sometimes is required to, to play this game. It's a business. At the end of the day, sometimes, you know, guys come in with this, why well, I, don't, I don't have to work out today, why well, I don't have to study my playbook today. But we take this approach that everything matters. Every detail matters when it comes in this building. And we make certain that we put our arms around every rookie, every free agent that comes here and meet them where they are and then help them develop from there. You know, that starts, too, with the head coach a little bit, does it not, Marcus? I mean, I don't know, you, you know, as Braylon mentioned, you don't have to talk bad about the other guy, but but the guy you got sure in there do. now, Doug Peterson. <laughs> Doug Peterson, I mean, this is a Super Bowl-winning coach that has been there and done that and kind of brings a little bit of a cachet uh, to the organization and, and a mindset, does he not? Uh, absolutely. I think, Doug, with, with all he's done with his pedigree, winning the Super Bowl, he comes with a tremendous sense of confidence when you walk into a meeting and you hear him talk and knowing he's a Super Bowl winning coach. But the thing I'm more impressed about Coach Peterson is that, you know, after playing, he went back and taught high school and became up a high school coach. And then he got back into the business. So this guy started from the bottom and worked his way all the way up to the top. And to me, in that, there's a greater appreciation for the player engagement director. There's a greater appreciation for the people that cook our meals. There's a greater appreciation for the guy that's doing the cut-ups and drawing the pictures late at night because he did all that stuff. Yeah. And so to me, when you can take into account his accolades as a coach and then you add in his res- respect from how he got back to being a head coach and you take all that and, and mix it together, I think Doug Peterson is one, one of the greater coaches in this game today. Yeah, definitely. A lot of pissed off people in Philly when he was let go, when he was fired. A lot of fans are pissed off. You're talking about a team and franchise that had never won for as story as they are, and you let go of the guy that get it, got it done. Got to get back to Michigan. Got to let you go as well. I know that this is work week. Got to let you go. Appreciate the time, big bro. Uh, I got to relate to Michigan and Georgia. Georgia is the only roadblock in terms of the teams that people believe are unbeatable. Or this is it. This is reigning, defending. Do you think in your mind Michigan can stand with Georgia and or do you think Michigan can beat Georgia? Yeah, I, I think so. I think the way this team is, is put together is put together as a tough, physical football team, and that's who Georgia is. And, they, and they're playing and coached by, by a guy that I spent some time with in, in the league and, and Kirby. Uh, but they're, they're a hard-nosed, tough team. But I think what Michigan experienced last year is going to be a great advocate for what happens this season. And I think that if that matchup happens, I think they're better prepared because of what happened last year. It's like, okay, we got to get bigger, we got to get faster, we got to get stronger. We have to find a way to beat two teams this year. It's Ohio State and Georgia. And I think this team is built for that. Marcus, we certainly appreciate it, my friend. Happy holidays to you. And uh, (laughs) I I hope to – I'll be rooting for you after this week, okay? I'll be rooting for you. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. We root for Michigan, though. We 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 will root for Michigan. We will root for Michigan. There you go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's go. I love it. Yeah, got him in the spirit now. Got him in the Michigan vibe now. Let's go. Marcus, certainly appreciate it. It, man thanks so much we'll talk to you down the road here happy holidays